Good afternoon and welcome to Alumni Stadium in Dover, Delaware for today's DX Digital Network broadcast on ESPN3. Featuring the Hornets of Delaware State University, hosting the Wildcats of Bethune-Cookman University. Hello everyone, I'm Gary Lang and I am joined by Mike Walker. We'll be back with the start of today's game in a moment. At DSU Foundation at desu.edu or call 302-857-6055. is first and 10 at the DSU 10 yard line. Thomas Betrand Houdon on the carry. Second down for Delaware State. It 
It's second and six at the 14. It's third and eight at the 12 yard line. is incomplete. Fourth down for Delaware State. Jose Robo Martinez will punt for Delaware State. First and ten for the Wildcats. It's first and ten at the DSU twenty yard line. Kevious Williams pass is incomplete. Second and 10 for Bethune Cookman. Ball on the DSU 20 yard line. Akevius Williams on the quarterback keeper. Third down, third down. It's third and nine at the DSU 19. Marcus Wiley, the attended receiver. Fourth down! Xavier McDonald will attempt a 36 yard field goal.
Talik Bateo on the quarterback keeper. Second down for Delaware State. It's second and five at the DSU 25. Thomas Beltran Houdon on the carry. Third down for Delaware State. It's third and one. Ball on the DSU 29 yard line. Beltron Houdon on the carry. Through the chains. First and ten. Hornets. Ball on the 32 yard line. Thomas Beltron Houdon on the carry. Second down for Delaware State. It's second and six at the 36. Beltron Houdon on the carry. Move the chains. First and ten. Hornets. Ball on the 44 yard line. Thomas Bart ran Houdon on the carry. Second down for Delaware State. It's second and nine at the 45 yard line. for Delaware State. It's third and nine. Ball on the DSU 45 yard line. Bethea's pass is complete to number 21, Jordan Hannon. Fourth down for Delaware State. Jose Roma Martinez will punt for Delaware State.
It's 4 to 10 at the Wildcat 24. Thomas Bartbrand Hudon on the carry. Second down for Delaware State. It's second and eight and the 22. Thea's pass is incomplete. Is it Woodley, the attended receiver? Third and eight for Delaware State. Ball on the Wildcat 22 yard line. Touchdown. The previous play is under further review. After uh, uh, modeling themselves after that one handed catch that you see in the pros these days, that is all very prominent. Now, the officials are going to review to make sure he came down in the end zone. contributions only a freshman didn't expect for him to have to make the contributions that he's doing now. But again he's just doing a great job of, of maximizing on the opportunity that's been afforded him or does that Woodley his 21st match of the season
I'll kick off for a Delaware State. And he's got his hands out trying to figure out who made that fair catch. It wasn't me. I wanted to run the ball. Yeah, yeah. Both quarterbacks early in the game, Gary, throw that skip pass. Or that's just one of those situations where I think quarterbacks are just a little bit too tense. Uh, maybe didn't warm up enough, but I mean, those are the type of passes you have to make. Inside the five yard line, down out of bounds at the two. Williams passes and picked off by Charles Peeler. Peeler, Gary, just doing a good job of anticipating that pass. He had his eyes facing where they were supposed to be facing, which is towards the quarterback. He stepped right in front and did a great job of scooping that up and just hauling down that field. I thought he was going to go airborne around the five yard line, but I guess he decided, hey, I just want to make sure the offense gets this ball and a chance to score. Second interception of the year for Peeler, and it's first and goal for Delaware State at the Bethune Cookman two yard line. Another opportunity for the Hornets to take advantage of a turnover and put points on the board. Mathea hands off to Hudon through the middle, and no signal yet. They're going to mark it down just inside the one yard line. Thomas Burt ran Hudon on the carry. Penalty flag on the play. See, uh, I can tell you, we don't have to see what the penalty is. It's going to be on sports and like conduct. It's on just a matter ball. who's on who at yeah. this point. And if it's on Delaware State University, that would be a shame. Because that would be a lack of focus and a lack of discipline by the Hornets. Let's see what they do here. Let's see if we can get the ball by Eric after the play, after the play, most sports like most sports like the offense, offense, oh. 66. Second down, second down, that is number 66. First, most sports like conduct foul here. And head coach Rod Milstead is saying to the officials, "What do you, what, what did you call there? What happened?" Move the ball back to the 16 yard line where it will be still first down for Delaware State. It'll be first down and goal. Second down, though, a loss of down on the unsportsmanlike conduct because it came on the dead ball. Second and goal at the Again, that's a shame. You know, it's one of those situations where Milstead might want to pull his players together and show them this is what happens when you lose your pool. You give up valuable real estate, either responding to something that wasn't right. And Coach Milstead doesn't want this. Conversation to end. He wants time to time out. Time out. Yeah, he just called a timeout here. He's going to go talk to that offensive unit. The first player he's talking to is Caden Crawford. He wants to calm him down. Crawford's still steamed over what happened. Rod Milstead is talking to him. All the assistant coaches and the trainers are working with the rest of the squad. Rod Milstead is working on calming down his right tackle. His only other option is take him out. Yeah, and I'm sure he wants him to play the game, but listen, if he can't play under control and he can't understand that, yo, we can't we can't respond to a lot of things that happen on, on, on the field, he is going to have to sit him down. Because again, after a big interception, you're literally feet away from putting up more points on a very explosive offensive team. You cannot give those type of opportunities away. 
All right, so here we go. The timeout over. Second down and goal from the 16-yard line. Bayo from the shotgun takes the snap. Looks left side, left side. Throwing down the corner of the end zone. Incomplete. Wanted to get it down there to Corin Aline, but it was uh, way out of bounds. No chance to catch that one. Third down. The intended receiver. Farting goal for Delaware State. Ball on the Wildcats, 16 yard line. Hornets now just about have to pass to punch it into the end zone unless they can pull off a good play up play fate. We're open up a huge hole. I don't see them being overly aggressive because, again, they're already in field goal position. They'd love to go up to 10 nothing, so I think they're going to be a little bit conservative guy and not going to push the envelope. Let's see what happens here on third down, goal for 16. Taya steps up. Oh, 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 He'll run with the football. He has a blocker out there on the right side. He's going to be knocked out of bounds at the two-yard line. Tyler That's where they started the drive at the interception. Now they're there with a fourth down and goal. If you're Rod Milstead, what do you do? Do you tell your offense, go out there and do it? You know, I think it's a numbers game. but And uh, you know what? They're going to go for it. That is the number. <laughs> yeah. They're going to go for it here. They'll send in the tight end Isaiah Williams to help out on blocking. It'll be fourth and goal at the three. The back of the backfield behind Tyreek Bethea. And Bethune-Cookman just jumped across the line of scrimmage. Is there a flag? I haven't seen a flag on the play. No, they don't think the officials called that flag, Gary. Nope, and, and the Hornets didn't make it. They That play broke apart, and it looked like the offensive unit just mistimed everything. Some players moved on the snap, and other ones didn't. Now, Rod Milstead's asking the officials, why was there not a flag? That defense came across the line of scrimmage before the snap. And he's not getting an answer from anyone. Turn it over to Bethune-Cookman, though, first and ten from their own four. That turnover turns into nothing for Delaware State. Could be huge later in the game. We'll see. Here's quarterback Akebius Williams from the shotgun, from his end zone, hands it off on first down. They run behind right tackle, and the give is to Isaac, Isaac Washington. Washington carries it out to the six-yard line. A lot of extracurricular activity out there. I see guys, you know, after the whistle's been blown, still uh, engaging each other, you know, hope the officials get this thing under control. This could turn ugly very quickly. Frustration, at least on this near sideline for Delaware State. As they felt a couple of calls did not go their way in that last possession after the interception. Quarterback on the keeper. Fumbled the ball in the end zone. He will be sacked, and that will be a safety the Hornets get to. Previous Williams lost the handle in the end zone. On the fake handoff, the ball came stripped out of his hands. He went back into the end zone to get it, grabbed a hold of it, and then was taken down in the end zone for the safety. Devin Smith doing his impersonation of the uh, a shot. Media. Play, Time out. Or a hammer Media. throw action from Delaware State University. Did a great job of just wrapping Williams up and pretty much ending that play. 433 left in the first quarter. Now it's Delaware State 9, Bethune Cookman nothing. A timeout on the field. You're watching the meet. Like the power to do it. Really good field position. And the choice by the kicker of a free kick. Uh, well, it's a free kick, but a choice of whether he wants to put it on a tee and kick it or he can punt it. Xavier McDonald has chosen to put this ball on the tee. Hornets return men are standing between their 20 and 25 yard line. So they're looking for the offense to be in good field position here. They just have to hold on to it. Taken in at the 26-yard line by Keenan Black. And he's hit pretty quickly as he crosses the 30 up to the 31-yard line. So the Hornets, that's not a bad place to start at your own 31. And they've shown, Gary, that they can move the ball down the field. They've had pretty good success running the ball. Uh, just got to mix it up. Show some good balance with the pass game and, you know, just have a drive where they can sustain uh, some offense and, and keep this offense on the field and strategically move down the field. 
And they used up a lot of clock on that last possession where they did move downfield before they had to punt. And then things turned their way on that punt. It's Houdon on the carry. Couldn't find anything behind the left tackle. Bounced it to the outside and uh, got back to the line of scrimmage, and that's all. Houdon tried to run inside the tackles, but again, Bethune-Cookman doing a really good job of uh, filling in those inside holes and, and not allowing any gaps to open up. So Houdon has to continuously bounce it out, bounce it out. And that's where that defensive support, that second and third level support comes up and finishes them off. Again, Delaware State University has to be very careful not to be overly predictable in their offensive sets. Second down and 10. Talik Bethea for the Hornets has a touchdown pass to his credit here today. He gives it to Houdon, who pushes forward close to the 34-yard line. He's going to bring up a third down and long for the Hornets. Again, Delaware State just pounding inside those tackles, looking for the same type of yards they got last week out of Houdon. And, you know, clearly Bethune-Cookman has you know, done a pretty good job of studying in the film. They've dedicated uh, the interior and those linebackers to stopping that run. Ball on the far side hash mark. They flood the right side with receivers, three of them. But they rolls right, throws. It is complete, and it will be a first down for Delaware State. As the completion goes to Corin Aline, we have a penalty marker on the play. And that's going to be on Aline, Gary, because he didn't have the presence of mind to know uh, where the sideline was at. So he stepped out of bounds, and he came back in and he and can't caught be the that first ball. one to touch the ball then. Right. Got to know where the sideline is at. Even when you're running patterns to the sideline, you got to know where they're at. Even if you're pushed out by the defender in that contact area. And that was is what the call will be. Illegal touching, I think, is what they call it. Illegal touching. Number 31 on receiving team. Have a loss of down. Fourth down. Loss of down, fourth down, and seven for Delaware State. That's a big one. They had the first down. Had to give it up. And they'll send out Jose Romo Martinez again to punt. His last one, remember he, he ran to the left side of that offense, kind of rugby style, and then kicked it. It had a real fast spin to it, and it was a backspin. Return man was unable to hold on to it. This time he gets a traditional end-over-end -end kick, and the fair catch is made at the 35-yard line by Tyrese Spain. So the Wildcats will take it over first and 10 from their 35-yard line, try to get that offense on track here. Two turnovers by Bethune-Cookman here in the first period. Uncharacteristic for a team that is 6-2 and two on the season, 4-1 and one in the conference. Again, that Delaware State University defense, Gary's done a pretty good job matching the intensity level of that Bethune-Cookman offense. But again, they've been out on the field for quite some time early in this game. The handoff on first down goes to Keyshawn Bird. Bird works out to the 39-yard line, pickup of four, second and six. Devious Williams hands off on second down, gives it to Bird. Hit in the backfield, he'll lose a couple of yards. They're going to mark him down at the 37-yard line making it third down and eight. This Hornet defense hard-nosed so far here in this football game. Linebacker Pontrell Gray doing a good job, Gary, of getting in that defensive, getting to that offensive line, excuse me, and making a tackle behind the line of scrimmage. And right now the defense is playing excellent, especially inside the box. They're making it real difficult for Bethune Cookman to get any run yards. Interception thrown earlier by Williams, his fifth of the season. Now he rolls left side, looks, throws, it is complete, and it will be a first down for Bethune-Cookman up to the 47-yard line. Stephen Francois on the catch for Bethune-Cookman. Hornets change personnel on the fly here. Bethune-Cookman has to get a 12th man off also as Teron Mallard heads for the sideline. They set up at the line of scrimmage, blown back in the backfield with the quarterback, with Darian Wilson. Handoff will go to, well, fake the handoff to Wilson, throw the pass out to the side, complete, and yards after the catch by Jimmy Robinson, 
dangerous player out there for Bethune Cookman. Coming into today, 29 catches for 402 yards, four touchdowns for Jimmy Robinson. He was on the receiving end of the Wildcats' longest touchdown of the season, a 70-yarder against Morgan State. Straight ahead dive and upended coming through a gain of maybe two yards on that carry for Ladarian Wilson. Right now, Bethune Cookman just kind of working the flats against Delaware State University. They haven't gone vertical on them yet. No deep pass patterns. Just trying to get guys out in space. Wilson picked up two yards, but the first down for the Wildcats to the Hornets 42. A lot of time there for the quarterback. Throwing down in, inside the five yard line. Two receivers right in that area, and two Hornets down there covering, and the fall, ball fell in between everybody. Charles Peeler and Devin Smith back there uh, in that uh, left corner of the end zone again, doing a good job of picking up the, where the ball was at in the air and then closing on it, making sure that nobody on the offense caught that pass. Second down and 10. They sure gave Akevius Williams plenty of time to throw that football. They'll hand it off on second down to Wilson. Ladarian Wilson up to the 40-yard line, a gain of two, third down and eight. So now quarterback Akevius Williams looks to the sideline to get the signal from there, the play. Brings the team to the line of scrimmage. The snap from the gun drops back, wants to throw, has time. Now he has to scramble. Hornets after him, running to the far sideline, throws the ball out of bounds, incomplete, and it'll be fourth down and eight. They'll have to send out their funding unit. Good job by William Burke on that play, Gary. He's a guy, again, comes off the bench. No name you don't hear quite a bit, but he must have heard what you said about uh, Williams having all that time on the prior pass play, and he got off that offensive lineman and put some pressure on him, forced him outside of the pocket. We have a timeout here on the field with, uh, let's see, the end of the first quarter, a timeout. That's why you're watching the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN3. Gary Lang and Mike Walker from Dover, Delaware at Delaware State University. Keenan Black standing at the 12 to take the punt. And we have motion on the offensive line. The person on the left side moved early, and that looked like it was uh, Keyshawn Burr. Check that uh, Jimmy Robinson the third moved early. So we have a marker. False start. False start. Off and off that actually six. helps Bethune Cookman. It gives them five Still more yards for the punt. Sometimes they want that extra distance in there. Sure, so he can open that leg up and get a nice good swing and maybe get some good height on it yeah. and some good distance. The rule of four. He would rather force the Hornets to, to field the punt right down around the 10 than have it go into the end zone for the touchback and bring it out. Bryce Coward is the punter for the Wildcats, punting from his 40-yard line. Gave it a short, low kick. Hornets will back away from this one. It will roll and now start to come back toward Bethune-Cookman and go dead right around the five-yard line for Delaware State. So the Hornets starting deep in their own territory here, their worst field position of the day. Right, and you're going to require this offense again, Gary, do something that they've struggled to do throughout this entire season, which is to march down the field, pick up a whole bunch of first downs, and put more points on the board. They can't. Uh, assume that this current lead that they have over Bethune-Cookman will hold up over the remainder of the game. In that first uh, quarter, Hornets ran the ball 15 times for 45 yards, completed a 27-yard pass, and that was the touchdown. They'll give it to Houdon on first down. He bangs out to the, call it, uh, nine-yard line. Between the nine and the ten, it will be second down and six. Put it down on the nine. Hudon in the first quarter, net of 27 yards rushing. But the touchdown for Delaware State went to Bazette Woodley. Now through the middle, Hudon, big hole, and he took advantage of it and ran over a tackler out to the 28-yard line, 
Move the chains, first down, Delaware State. You can tell, Gary, he's just got good balance. He's a big package. He's a heavy load to bring down, but he's the type of guy you're not going to bring down with an arm tackle, and he looks to engage those, those defenders. And when he does engage them, he usually wins that battle. He gets into that secondary and has that smaller defensive back. He's going to pick up the extra yardage because he'll run over people. And potentially a charge because it could be an assault. Hylik Bethea hands it off to Houdon. He's hit as he comes across the line of scrimmage. Got a yard to the 29-yard line. They are working him out today. We haven't even seen another back in the backfield on any play. Linebacker Rashawn McNeil and defensive lineman Lamine Kuanda on the tackle. I say that, Houdon checks out, and Jalen Lumpkin goes in for Delaware State. Gary Lang, the uh, second offensive coordinator uh, for Delaware State University. They must, be, they must be patched into our feed, Gary, taking your advice. Lumpkin, not even listed on the online roster for Delaware State, so he's a, a late addition to the team here as the season goes along. Bethea with plenty of time, airs this one out. It is incomplete, just off the hands of uh, Bazette Woodley. Good coverage down there. Woodley jumped just a little bit early. If he'd have timed that jump just a split second later, he would have pulled that one in. But he was on his way down, touching the field when that ball hit his hands. Henry Miller the third on the defensive coverage, Gary. Uh, is glad that he uh, missed time that jump because had he made that catch, that would have been about a a 50-yard gain on that play. Yeah, that was down around the 30-yard line of Bethune-Cookman, so you're right. Uh, it would have been about uh, 40, 50 yards on the play. Now it's third down and a long eight yards, call it nine yards to go for the Hornets. Bethea has to run, brings it up, and starts to slide at the 31-yard line, and we're going to get a penalty marker. He went into his slide, and then he was hit. And some people say, well, uh, yeah, and, and it was he got hit up in the head. So that could be the call. He the, the slide was a little bit late. It would have been hard for that tackler to peel off. But if it was helmet to helmet, they got him for that. Four of the officials get together to confer on this one. The play only gained for Delaware State two yards. But a penalty could give them a first down here. We have a reminder for you, program rem reminder here on HSRN Tuesday night. All the Hornets against Del University of Delaware. Number 18 defense with targeting. The previous play is under further review. All right, Rashawn McNeil called for targeting. They've called the penalty, and they've gone with it. Now they're saying further review. I think to see if it was intentional. If it's intentional, they will uh, yeah, that, that's sit you down. That's a that, tough one. That's a tough one because Bethea was starting to go down when McNeil hit him. There was no way to peel off. And, and I don't think you could say that was an intentional targeting as the quarterback was on his way down into the slide. That would be a tough call to make. Sean McNeil, the linebacker, called for the penalty. Now the officials uh, on the headphones while the play is being reviewed. Referee Eric Green has the headphones with him, the field judge Terrell Turner. started to mention the programming reminder Tuesday night on hsrn.com or the hsrn app Delaware State's women traveled to Newark Delaware just a little bit up the road here to take on the University of Delaware Blue Hands women's basketball on hsrn Tuesday night at 7 p.m. it's great talking to coach Caputo and the tailgate kickoff show today just giving us some insight to the program all the new women uh, that have joined the program, his long-term, short-term vision. And, you know, you just got a sense of how focused this man is, Gary. We were trying to get him to just After talk first, about the season. Gets confirmed. Uh, what his 18, vision is. is he couldn't get past tonight's game. You know, he just really focused on, um, you know, one game, one play one at, a time. at a time. And, yep. you know, I love guys when they talk like that because it lets me know that, you know, they're really focused on 
the objective at hand, which is winning the games that are in front of you and not really trying to manage uh, your championship. That was a 15-yard penalty that moves the ball out to the Delaware for State 46-yard line. <coughs> the review confirmed the penalty call, first and 10, Hornets. Houdon, fake hand off to him. But Thea to run again. He'll run out of bounds right at the 49-50 yard line. They'll mark him down at midfield. And a marker on the play. And we'll get an idea of where this one is. The marker that we see right at the five of the 50 yard line on the near side here. Right about at the 48 yard line of Bethune Cookman. And the Hornets walking it back a little bit, it looks like. Play will not. There's no foul There's no for holding. No holding. foul. Second down. Second down. They picked up the flag. It'll be second down and a four yard gain for Bethea on the play. Second and six. And that's all he's got to do, Gary. You know, they're not looking for him uh, to lead the conference in rushing. He's just a freshman. They just, when the plays break down and there are no options, they want him to tuck and run the ball. As you can tell, when he gets an opportunity to run, he's very fast. He's a good runner. He's just not familiar with that role. Bethea from the shotgun with Houdon in the backfield. Takes the snap, hands it off. Houdon runs right side, then cuts back up the middle to the 49-yard line. A gain of one. It's third down and five. And Mike Walker, we've been told that Rashawn McNeil, uh, they, they uh, ruled that he is uh, guilty of targeting, and he has been uh, disqualified for the rest of the game for Bethune Cookman. That's a tough call, uh, you know, but at the end of the day, Gary, we've seen that happen. Uh, Many, many different players on many different teams. Even our own uh, Jihad Niebauer had uh, a yeah. problem with that last year. A couple times. We got ejected two games for targeting. So, again, it's just one of those things you have to be conscious of if you play defense. Third down and five. The Thea looks right side, wants to throw. Nobody open, runs with the ball, dives forward. He's got a first down. Now a late flag in the backfield where uh, one of the offensive linemen Pancake, a Bethune Cookman player. Let's see what that's about. Now for Bethune Cookman, the the elimination today of Rashawn McNeil could affect them next week. He has to sit out a portion of that okay. game against North Carolina A&T. Number six. Ten yard penalty. Repeat the down. That's a tough call. Caden uh, Crawford, who got called earlier for an unsportsmanlike conduct down at the two yard line, got called for holding there. He got up claiming to the officials that he was thrown to the ground. So rather than a first down up the 44-yard line, the Hornets are back at their own 41 with a third down and 15. Again, one of those penalties, that's a momentum killer, Gary. Unless they can convert here. Third and long, but they uh, straight drop back, looks, throws, short, over the middle. His arm was hit just as he let the ball go. He was trying to get it to Thomas Bertrand Udon, and it, it missed the mark entirely, but his arm was hit just as he was throwing the ball. So let's bring out Jose Romo Martinez one more time here for Delaware State punt. And some good things have happened for the Hornets on these punts today so far. This is one of those punts where he's really got to put a foot in the guy. He wants to drive this as, as high and as far as he possibly can to try to flip this field uh, for the defense. Tyree Spain standing at the Wildcats 25 yard line to take the kick. And Martinez. Again, with that rugby style, runs to his left and then kicks it. The ball goes down inside the 20-yard line of Thune Cookman. Started to roll back toward Delaware State, so they covered it right at the 20-yard line, and that's pretty good field position. No return on the kick. Good job by Karan Ali figuring that that ball was going to come back and just scooping it up. We have a timeout Media. on the field. Timeout. 10 43 Media. remaining Media. in the first timeout. half. Timeout. We'll take the time out as well. You're watching the MEAC Digital Network on e From Dover, Delaware, Gary Lang and Mike Walker with you with Delaware State football. And it will be Kevius Williams, the quarterback from the shotgun. Hands off. They run right side on first down. Cut up field. Penalty marker in the backfield as Jimmy Robinson picks up yardage out to the 31-yard line. But this one is probably going to come back. 
he took a big hit by Mario Goings uh, as he hit that second level. The linebacker, another one of those names, guy we don't mention much. Holding, but he's always Off. there. Number penalty. Still first down. Well, the penalty is on the offense. He might have heard holding was the call. That will move the ball back to just outside the 10-yard line of Bethune-Cookman. They have to get to the 30, so let's call it first down and 20. First down and 19. Wildcats put two receivers out on each side as Williams fakes the handoff, running with the ball right side. He goes out of bounds just after he crosses the 20-yard line. They'll say he went out at the 20. Nice pickup of nine yards on the play. Williams doing a good job of exploiting that collapsing end. Caldwell, the Delaware State University. Second down and 10. Williams now throwing on the split out to the left side. Got it complete to Jonathan Thomas, who was hit and knocked out of bounds at the 27-yard line of Bethune-Cookman. Third down and three. Dwayne Granger on the coverage, Gary, again, giving a lot of cushion, allowing these guys to catch the ball, uh, just making sure he doesn't get beat deep. Williams from the gun. The ball, the snap, low. He had to pick it up, fake the handoff. He keeps it. Now looking downfield, fakes the toss, and he's going to be stopped short of the line of scrimmage to make it fourth down and five. And once again, the defense has done its job helped by the center on that one who snapped the ball low. It bounced in front of the quarterback. Yeah, Delaware State just benefited from slop, benefiting from sloppy play by Bethune-Cookman. And, you know, the offense is going to get what, I, what appears to be pretty decent field position uh, if this punt is fielded cleanly by Keenan Black. Standing right about his 46-yard line, waiting for the punt from Bryce Coward. Coward at his 11 to take the snap. Good snap. Pressure coming up the middle, but he got it away. Keenan Black will back off from this one. It takes a Bethune-Cookman bounce and roll down to the Hornets' 37-yard line, and they won't complain about that field position at all. They sure won't, and they won't complain about all the time that's ticking off the clock, too, because right now the clock, for, for probably the first time I think all season, has been a friend of Delaware State University. We have 8.50 remaining in the second quarter here. What would you like the power to do? Gary Lang and Mike Walker with Hornets football. Talik Bethea having a pretty good afternoon here. They gave him time there, and he is airing it out downfield. Incomplete, and the fans want the marker. So does Corin Aline. As he went for that ball, that defender had his arm wrapped around him. Yeah, you're not supposed to be able to twist the guy's body, and that was just a terrible blown call by the officials on that play. It's an isolation situation too, Gary. So everybody's focused on it, and it's just a man-to-man -man coverage, and the defender put that arm on the receiver and turned his body. And if you want to be the most uncomfortable person in alumni stadium right now, you need to be the side judge, Justin Ford, because you just got a full load of it from Rod Milstead. Second down and 10. Houdon into the middle, gets up to the 39-yard line, a gain of two. There, there are certain people in the world whose wrath I would rather not face and as nice a man as he is, and as gentle a man as he is, I would rather not have to deal with Rod Milstead on a full angry. You know, he's a typical offensive lineman. I played with him. He's 99% of the time, he's a decent guy. The 1% is when he's on the field that he's not a decent guy. <laughs> yeah, it's Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Three-yard gain on that last play, third down and seven. But they up. Takes that snap out of the shotgun. Steps up, throws into the middle. It is complete, and it's going to be close to the first down, but I think he's going to be just a little bit short on the catch by Miles Beverly, the tight end. 
Yeah, they're, they're already motioning. It's a first down, so this is going to be a good pickup for Delaware State. Hornets got a good spot out of that. I thought he was just a little bit short, maybe about a half a yard short, but the tacklers Ooh. twisted him around and threw him to the ground, and that's how the extra yardage was achieved. Yeah, he fought for those extra inches, and you know this is a game of just that inches. Good job by Delaware State picking up that first down. First and 10 at the 47-yard line. Bethea takes a look, takes the snap. Gives it off to Houdon, fakes the handoff to Houdon, and throws again to the tight end, Miles Beverly. And he's going to pick up another Delaware State first down to the 43-yard line of Bethune-Cookman. Just great play action by Bethea on that. I thought Houdon had the ball, and that was just a really good fake. That held the linebackers, not allowed him to get open for that easy Pitch and catch reception. Those two catches by Miles Beverly, his first two catches of the season. Now it's Houdon through a big hole in the middle, rambling downfield and inside the 25 to the 23 yard line. Boy, did they open up a hole there, but those passes into the middle like that helped open up that defense for that play. Their confidence is building too, Gary. It's hard to determine right now who's one and eight uh, and who's six and two right now. Got down to the 22-yard line of Bethune-Cookman. Move those chains again for Delaware State as they pick up the first down. Any points on the board for Delaware State resulting in this drive would be huge for this team. Here's Bethea faking the handoff, rolling right side complete. And he gets Miles Beverly again, the tight end on a rollout, down to the 10-yard line, and another Hornet first down. They found the floor in the defense that there's not adequate a coverage for the tight end. They haven't accounted for him, and Delaware State's just been milking that this entire possession. And the Hornets haven't really thrown to the tight end much this entire season, but they finding they're finding Miles Beverly here on this series, getting his first three catches of the season, and they're big ones. Yeah, they're just going to I guess page four in the playbook. First and goal from the 10. And we have encroachment by the defense. No penalty marker as Houdon goes through the middle. Was there a whistle because Bethune Cookman never reacted to the snap? It's either got to be a penalty or a touchdown, Gary. It can't be a, a no play. One or the other, yeah. Unless they, they blew the whistle and blew the play dead. But the officials are letting them line up for the conversion touchdown. Delaware State, Thomas Bertrand Houdon on a 10 yard run right through the middle. And that defense just was not ready at all. They never reacted. Now Romo Martinez to kick the extra point. It is up and it is good. And we have 538 left in the first half. And the Hornets now lead Delaware State 16, Bethune Cookman nothing. And there is a timeout on the field. We'll take it Media. as well. You're watching timeout. the MEAC Digital Media. Network on ESPN3, and you're listening to HSRN. To help turn your ambitions into action, what would you like the power to do? Line guy. I don't think we've ever seen this look uh, on this team, or for that matter, it's been a while since we've seen it. Maybe since what, week three? Lincoln. Uh, yeah, week two. Hornets with 109 rushing yards in the game. Bethune Cookman with seven. Delaware State 57 passing yards. Bethune Cookman with 27 so far in this game. Short kickoff taken at the 23 yard line by Kashawn Bird. Bird's taking it up the left side to the 50 yard line across midfield into Delaware State territory before he is knocked out of bounds at the 48-yard line. A little breakdown on special teams there. You know, those short kicks indicate that you're usually nervous about those deep return guys, and we've seen that twice already where Delaware State has opted to kick to the, not the last level, but the second level that they call it, of returners. Uh, and again, they're trying to keep it away from the dangerous returners that Bethune-Cookman has on kickoff return team. But when you kick to that first level, you're usually seeding 10 yards right there. Yeah, so it's a gamble. You're hoping that the ball goes high enough and your defense can get down there quick enough uh, to, to get a, a quick stop. Wildcats from the Delaware State 48-yard line and the quick pitch around and around to Marcus Riley. Riley down the right sideline to the 20, to the 15-yard line. Busted a tackle there, got down the inside the 10 
before he was finally taken down by the linebacker coming up covering the play, Tristan Murren. And a lesson there, young people, when you're going to hit somebody, hit them, wrap them up, and tackle them. Don't just bump them with your shoulder because they keep running. Jahad Nebau just put a shoulder and a helmet on him thinking that he would knock him down. And, and he kept his balance and picked up an, a, an, an extra yard or two after the contact. Yeah, about the seven yards more makes it first down and goal from the Delaware State 8. And they'll run the ball straight up the middle. Breaking tackles, getting down into inside the one-yard line. Hornets indicating that the ball came out. But the officials say, nope, down by contact. But it'll be second and goal from the one-yard line. Run on the field was a Isaac fumble and recovery by the offense. There was a fumble, and it's recovered by Bethune-Cookman. Isaac Washington on the carry, second and goal from the one. They give in the backfield and submarined loss of two on the play back to the three-yard line. Down, Jimmy down, Robinson on the carry, losing yardage. Third and goal now from the three. Well, let's see. They've got the ball on the two-yard line. Let's see about this Hornets defense. There have been times during the season when it's a bend but don't break type of defense for Delaware State. Let's see if they're able to maintain time that out. here. Time out. Cook with 16. Their first shot, time out. 402 left in the first half. Bethune-Cookman not happy with the way things went on those first two plays. And head coach uh, Terry Sims wants a timeout to pull it together. I can tell you there are two universities right now that are really cheering for Delaware State University. One is obviously Hornet Nation. Mm -hmm. uh, the other one is Aggie Pride at North Carolina A&T because they would love to see Delaware State knock off the only team that has a chance to knock off North Carolina a t so they don't get another opportunity to play in the Celebration Bowl. Yeah, that, that would be an opportunity, and, and the Aggies, we're being told, are, are trailing in their game. So <coughs> all kinds of strange things to be happening in the MEAC. The score against Morgan State, the Bears are leading the Aggies 16-13. It's the word we're getting here. Come back to action. Third down and goal for Bethune-Cookman. From the shotgun, quarterback Williams takes the snap, hands it off, and they won't get it. They're going to be stopped at the one-yard line on the carry by Ladarian Wilson. Fourth down and goal. And you know that Bethune-Cookman just has to go for it here. They tried a field goal in the first quarter, and it was just a horrible kick. They missed it. Now the offensive unit looking to the sideline on fourth down and goal from the two. Hornets defense trying to hold on here and maintain the shutout. Williams. They move the tight end into the middle to be the extra blocker, and the offensive line moved. Jumped across the line of scrimmage, move it back five yards. And now they may be forced to go for the field goal on if they have a fourth and goal from the seven. What they did on that play was take took the tight end, Jerry Beauchamp, from the right side, put him right in the middle so that he could be a blocker. You knew where the play was going to go, but then one of the uh, offensive uh, linemen defense. jumped. Number 48, oh, 48. Number 48, move saying to Delaware State came offense across. Offense Approachment by the defense, move the ball to the one, fourth and goal from the one. Well, that offensive lineman reacted to the Hornet coming across in the neutral zone. So they get it from the one yard line here, fourth down and goal. Lone back in the backfield, Ladarian Wilson. Wilson gets the handoff, runs right side, touchdown, Bethune-Cookman. He just kept peeling it off to the right side until he found a place where he could cut it into the end zone. And the Hornets kind of helped him along with that penalty. Yeah, it was one of those momentum killers. And, you know, Bethune-Cookman, they went against conventional wisdom, which would say to take the three, though the easy points. And, and uh, you know, you almost guaranteed three at that uh, range, but they did the smarter thing and picked up six, hoping to make it seven. Xavier McDonald's kick is up, and this one is a much better one than his field goal attempt, but it missed. 
He missed it. Looked like it went wide left. So with 2.48 left in the first half, the Hornets now lead 16 to 6. And got getting some breaks here. The kicking game for Bethune Cookman non existent here in terms of place kickers. Missed field goal, missed extra point. Four points that they've been denied. So that could even that could have really changed uh, the whole complexion of this game. But you know, I look at Delaware State University, Gary, and right now the kickoff return team, you know, they're really excited about being out there. And it looks like the whole offensive unit is standing together and they can't wait to get back out on the field. When's the last time we've seen that? They have plenty of time to try to get going here. DSU post game show is brought to you by American Spirit Federal yeah, Credit Union and Morgan State 16, North Carolina ENT 13 at the end of the third quarter. Halftime, South Carolina State 34, Howard 7. And in the second quarter, Norfolk State 17. Go Martin to the locker room at halftime. At the very least, they got to be thinking field goal, Gary. They'd like to add three points uh, to the scoreboard if they can get the whole six. Kickoff will be from the <clears throat> far side hash mark of the 35 yard line. McDonald kicks it high, not too deep. Hornets will take it at the 13 yard line. And a blocker in front of the return man. That is Trey Gross. Gross across the 30, just short of the 35 yard line where he goes out of bounds. Trey Gross with a nice kickoff return for Delaware State. Crossed the field with it. Took it out of bounds right at his bench. 35-yard line is the line of scrimmage for Delaware State. Check that uh, Jordan Hanna had the kickoff return there and not Trey Gross. Jordan Hanna. Pretty good return though, set his team up with good field position here from the 35 yard line. Houdon through the middle, that play set up kind of slowly, Mike, and only got out to the 36 yard line. Again, Delaware State being very conservative, you know, they really like uh, to run, you know, the, the majority of the focus of their offense in between the tackles. You know, we've seen situations where they might run that same play three times in a row, uh, very conservative. And I, I, you know, I think they just want to move the ball down the field it's just got to be a little bit more aggressive and take some chances. Well, right here, you don't want to turn the ball over either this close to halftime. Thea rolling right side. Looks like he wants to throw. He does so. It's low, and it is incomplete. Man was wide open, though. All you had to do is get it up a little bit higher, and they had a first down. It looks like uh, the intended recipient was Jalen Lumpkin. Or was that uh, 49, Kevin Meddy, the wide receiver? Meddy motioning that he was open with his arms without the quarterback knowing. Again, Talik Pathea just you know, didn't hit this guy and he was wide open. Third down and nine. Meddy hadn't catch a, caught a pass all year. He only had uh, three punt returns statistically on the season. Would have liked to have made that catch and got the first down. And now the Hornets call timeout, stopping the clock with a minute and 58 timeout. left Delaware State. in the first the half. Charge, kind of our version of a two-minute warning. Hornets have taken advantage of turnovers by Bethune-Cookman, but that defense for Delaware State has really been up to the task this afternoon. Again, they played very well. You know, you can't expect them to pitch a shutout against a team that was one of the more prolific scorers in the conference. It was only going to be a matter of time before the Wildcats stopped making some of the mental errors and the mistakes they were making and started getting some progress on offense, and you saw it uh, on their very last possession. Uh, but again, these are the situations where the Delaware State University offense has to come up huge. they got to make big plays. You know, they got to find ways to keep the chains moving, to keep that defense off the field. Bethune Cookman came into the game averaging about 26 points per game. Delaware State's defense is making a statement here in the first half. Now Bethea takes the snap, looks downfield, decides to run with the football, gets across to the 45-yard line. First down, Delaware State, as Bethea then goes out of bounds. Smart run by Tyleek Bethea. 
We have a penalty marker, though, back at the 44-yard line, but they got up to around the 49. We'll have to see what this call is, but usually won't be good the for the Hornets. Legal O-block, number 36, Legal O-block. 36. 36. offense. Nice. offense. 15, yep. 15, yep. 15, yep. Thomas Bertrand Hooden called for the illegal block. And that will move the ball back from where the penalty occurred at the 42-yard line, a 15-yard step off, back to the Delaware State 27-yard line. And that means it will be a third down and 18 instead of a first down at the 49. Penalties have not gone the Hornets' way today. Or all season, for that matter. Yeah. Not one of these situations where penalties have really resulted uh, and, and points for, for the Hornets. And You know, again, one of those situations where you take one step forward and you get 18 yards back. I think if you talk to Rod Milstead, it might not be a question of penalties called. He's more concerned about some that weren't called. Here's Houdon through the middle. He gets back seven yards up to the 34-yard line. It will be fourth down for Delaware State. It's those couple of instances earlier in the game when penalties weren't called, when a receiver downfield had uh, a defender wrap his arm around him to keep him from getting to the football, and no pass interference call was made. One minute, 41 seconds. So those kind of situations, some of the penalties that Rod Milstead felt needed to be called didn't get called, and he made his feelings known to the officials about it. Well, you just got to make your case because, you know, all, all officials, whether people realize it or not, their work is reviewed as well Yeah. as teams, and, you know, that's how they determine whether or not they get more work. If they don't work well together as a team, they'll literally have all these officials uh, – not working anymore essentially so um, you know you have to point those things out but you know look games are not one and lost by uh, officials because let's get let's be real the majority of the times they get it right you know that was a low block by uh, Houdon on that first down that Talib Pesaya picked up running the ball and those are the type of things that have been the Achilles heel of Dell State this entire season when they make the big plays they're only hamstrung uh, by a, a penalty that, that generally negates uh, the play itself. Play set to begin here for Delaware State, or to resume for Delaware State. Fourth down and 11 from their own 34-yard line as they set the punt here. Tyrese Spain stands at his 30, waiting for the kick. Jose Romo Martinez, check that, that's Fidel. And uh, he gets away a punt. It's a low one, but it rolls, and it's a good roll. We'll go down to the Bethune-Cookman 22-yard line and no return. Can't ask for better. You get that kind of distance and no return. That's the one good thing about an Astro turf field, Gary. That ball, it can, it, sometimes it takes wicked bounces. And listen... Uh, that time it worked out for Delaware State. There are times when it doesn't because the field is sometimes unforgiving. Wildcats will have a minute and 28 with which to work here from their own 22-yard line as we're coming close to the end of the first half. Kevius Williams from the gun. Three receivers split out wide on the right side. He'll come out of the pocket. Look, run on the right side too. Nobody was open. He took off running, and that was a good decision. And he's going to be close to first down yardage. Had to get to the 32. They're going to mark him out of bounds at the 30-yard line. Second down and eight. Kamara Jackson forcing him out of the uh, bounds there on that play. Williams with a little bit of time. Throws left sideline complete. Got it to Stefan Francois. And it's a first down for Bethune-Cookman. And they'll put the ball at the 45-yard line. And going out of bounds stops the clock with a minute and 12 left in the period in the half. Williams again wants to throw, does so complete, and stepping out of bounds is Marcus Riley. And another first down for Bethune-Cookman at the Hornets' 43-yard line. Hornets playing prevent defense out there. Bethune-Cookman taking advantage of it. Sure, and they got to recognize, you know, especially when you're playing 
to the, the sideline, you, you can't give that much cushion. You have to get a little bit closer to that wide receiver. Snap a little bit to the right side and low. Williams managed to save it. Rolled to his right side. Nobody opened. Got rid of it. Threw it out of bounds. Makes it second down and 10 from the 43. Defense is going to get a little bit of a break. Clock's going to stop. The Wildcats are going to look for the play to be uh, signaled in. Again, the defensive backs, especially the ones who are on the wide receivers, they have to come up. You can't give too much cushion because you'll allow them to nickel and dime themselves all the way down the field. 101 left in the half. Receivers split out wide on the right, three of them, as Williams takes the snap, drops back, looks down, nobody to throw to. He'll run with the football. He'll get a first down. Penalty marker goes down in the backfield. Bring this one back. It's going to be holding. Similar to the one that the Hornets got called on, but it looks like this one is going to be called on uh, Javon Camp Villalobos, the offensive lineman. And the Hornet player that was involved with him, Brandon Carswell, has gone down, has started to walk toward the sideline, and now has sat down. There's on no the foul. Field. No holding. No holding play. There's no foul. No foul. Holding is the call. First down. No, first down. They, they picked up the flag and moved the ball down to the 27 yard line. And it's a Bethune Cookman first down. Injury timeout. An injury timeout for Delaware State here. Carswell was the player involved in that, what we thought was holding Javon Camp Villalobos. And Carswell got up from the field, started to, took about three steps toward the Hornets bench, and then sat down again. And that's why we are sitting here with that injury timeout. Once again, a program reminder for you on HSRN.com. Tuesday night, you'll be able to listen to women's basketball, Delaware State's Hornets in Newark against the University of Delaware. Tip-off is at 7 p.m. I'll be there. That's the kind of game you don't want to miss. And I think... Uh, Coach Rod Milstead had a couple of words for the referee as yeah, he walked couple. by him there, too. Like, what are you doing? Uh, the, my guy gets hurt, and he gets pancaked, and you pick up the flag. Yeah, it didn't look like he was asking how the family was. No, you, you want to go to uh, get some ice cream after the game. First and 10 from the Delaware State 32-yard line. Pass complete. Short one by Williams out to Marcus Riley. That's going to pick up uh, about four yards for Bethune-Cookman. But again, he got out of bounds, stopping the clock with 48.8 seconds remaining in the half. Second and six. Devious Williams, the graduate student quarterback for Bethune-Cookman, drops back, wants to throw, nobody open. He'll run with it, puts his head down, and tries to get to the first down marker, comes up about a yard short. Now, Bethune-Cookman has called another timeout. Timeout, Bethune-Cookman. I think that's their last Their last charge, timeout. timeout. One minute, minute. timeout. Time and you got to assume, Gary, they got to strategize about getting into the end zone because I don't think they really trust their kicking game. Uh, at this point. No, I don't think so. Not after a missed field goal and a missed extra point. The only two opportunities uh, that Xavier McDonald has had to place kick out of a hold, and he missed both of them. So, uh, yeah, it's it would be tough for Terry Sims to say, the game clock to well, let's go ahead and try for a 40-yard um, field to goal. To 36, six seconds. They're going to put some more time back on the clock. 36.6 seconds is where they're going to reset it. Ball at the Delaware State 23. Well, the Hornets, statistically in the first half, right up until this drive by Bethune Cookman, pretty much had it lopsided. Bethune Cookman has put together a nice long drive here that they hope to culminate with points. Delaware State's been pretty stingy down there inside the 10 yard line. And, you know, you're hoping that the, uh, the defense really embraces that concept of bend but don't break 
They're going to have to be a little bit risky. They just can't allow Bethune Cookman to keep catching these short passes and just dinking and dunking down the field. Here's Williams handing off on third and two and caught in the backfield for a big loss. And it's that man we've been talking about all season. Brooks Parker doing a great job, Gary, giving, getting that deep penetration out of his linebacker position and making that tackle for a loss. Jimmy Robinson losing six on the play. Fourth down and three. They come quickly back to the line of scrimmage. Williams has to run, scrambles, throws right side. The ball caught. And they're going to say it was a catch as uh, Daryl Powell Jr. pulled it in. Knocked out of bounds immediately. I thought he was out of bounds. We couldn't see his feet, though. We were blocked from seeing the feet. But the official right there making the call. First down and 10 at the Delaware State 13-yard line for Bethune-Cookman. And hold on. I think we might have a review of that yeah, one. they're going to have to review that one, Gary. Eric Green. The previous play is under further review. Eric Green, the referee, is telling us uh, you could hear him there as the microphone was breaking up. They're going to review that play right at the sideline. Those who could see it were saying that uh, his feet came down out of bounds. So we'll uh, have a delay here while referee Eric Green goes over, puts on the headset, and is in communication with wherever this play is reviewed. And uh, I guess the, the review is made in the booth. Didn't take long. After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Well, they're going to call it a catch at the 13-yard line. Gary did a great job of keeping uh, – he had good sideline presence. He knew where his feet were at. He you know, just kind of extended his body. He didn't really get off the ground too high. He took a big hit that made it look like he wasn't uh, yep. in bounds. But that was just a good individual effort by the receiver setting himself up. And give Powell credit on that, not only where his feet were, but he had to reach out out of bounds to pull that catch in. That was not a ball that was thrown – particularly close to him, he had to make the effort. So we have 9.2 seconds left in this first half. The Wildcats come out first and 10 from their own, from the Delaware State 13-yard line. Williams takes the snap, drops back. Some pressure throwing way out of bounds. And you know what? He just knew he had to get rid of that football. He was going to be sacked. Didn't have a receiver There's anywhere no foul, close, but threw it way out of bounds over 88. on the track Gary before it finally bounced. Three seconds left, guys, so this is probably going to be the last play, barring any penalties on defense of this uh, quarter. Second down, but that doesn't matter with three seconds left in the half. Delaware State would love to go into the locker room with a 10-point lead here this afternoon. Ball on the near side hash mark. Here's Williams with three seconds on the clock. Has a man in motion in the near side, Robinson. Williams drops back, looking. Nobody open, plenty of time. Here comes the rush, has to run. He's taken down back at the 27-yard line, and that is how we will end the first half on a sack by the Delaware State defense, and it looked like it was Brandon Carswell who did it. The transfer from Savannah State, Gary's put his thing down in today's game. He was injured a little bit earlier, but came back into the game to pretty much put the nail in the coffin for Bethune Cookman's offense in this first half. And the Hornets will go to the locker room with a halftime lead, 16 to 6, over Bethune Cookman. Halftime coming up here at Alumni Stadium. You're watching the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN3. What would you like the power to do? A champion will rise at the 2019 Celebration Bowl. The champions of the MEAC and SWAC will meet at the Mercedes. Fast is six seconds. The other takes forever. One has built-in virus protection. The other should be quarantined.
Getting ready for the second half to begin at Alumni Stadium. Gary Lang along with Mike Walker. Time of possession in the first half. Almost eight minutes more for Delaware State. 18 minutes, 54 seconds. Compared to Bethune-Cookman's 11.06 time of possession. And the kickoff was short. Taken up the far sideline to about the 42-yard line by Jimmy Robinson for the Wildcats. Tackled by Trey Gross. Yeah, you normally hear that name. Uh, associated with offense, but Coach Milstead is one of those guys who puts what he calls his best players on special teams. So you're going to see guys who you think would never play special teams uh, actually serving in those roles, and you see why. Great tackle by wide receiver Trey Gross. Sun getting low in the sky toward the west, and this field orients east-west. So receivers looking back right now might have a little bit of a hard time. Quarterback tucks the ball, decides to run with it, and Akevius Williams picks up a couple of yards out to his 47-yard line. Give him a gain of five on that play. Didn't like what he saw. I would call that a coverage run. He was looking downfield maybe to pick something up vertically. And, uh, again, Delaware State doing a good job in coverage, forcing him to run the ball. Wildcats have second down and five at their own 47-yard line. Williams takes the snap. Mix up in the backfield, and they just blew that play up. Just about the time the handoff was to occur, Brandon Carswell got there. Three Wildcats in the area, and Carswell knocked them all down. Yeah, does he get two tackles for that? Because I, I think literally so. tackled two guys at the same time. Amazing defensive play by Carswell. Loss back to the 40-yard line, third down and 12. Carswell just completely demolished that play, and they're lucky they didn't lose the ball as he hit. Just about the time the handoff was occurring. Pressure coming here for Williams. Long pass downfield and well past the intended receiver. Jonathan Thomas brings up fourth down and 12. And boy, did this defense come out fired up. Huh? Man, God, I think they're starting to believe in themselves because they're playing above a level that we've seen all season. Uh, we, were, we were scripting for the three and out. That's exactly what just transpired. And now it gives the offense an opportunity to get back on the field. Hopefully something big can happen on this punt return, but if not, the offense has to get on, back on this field and make a statement on their first possession. Wildcats have fumbled twice, but uh, the Hornets have not been able to return either one. Here's Keenan Black. Fair catch called for and made at the Delaware State 27-yard line. Good field position now for Delaware State to see what they can do to start this second half with a 10-point lead. And if they really want to hold on, they need to go down and put some points on the board here early in the second half. The sun is in their faces, so it shouldn't bother receivers. It would be receivers who would be bothered right now heading the other way and having to look back for the ball with the sunlight. Tyleek Bethea, 5 of 12 passing in the first half. Hands it off to Thomas Bertrand Houdin, and he does what he did in the first half so well when he gained 96 yards on 93 yards on 22 carries. This time goes up over the 100 yard mark as he gets it to the 32 yard line, picks up five. You know, and he's a, just short of 100. I mean, it's been a quiet uh, 90 plus yard day for him, but again, it's been effective running. Every time he touches the ball, he keeps it very tight to that center guard gap, very low center of gravity to the ground, and, he, and he's been picking up four and five yards a pop. His longest in the first half was a 20-yarder. Fake handoff, but Thea decides to run with it. A little bit tentative on that one and just got back to the line of scrimmage. The indecision might have cost him four or five yards on that play, Gary, but, you know, he'll get better with that. He's not really known for his running ability, but when he does run the ball, he makes big things happen. It's third down and five now for the Hornets as they huddle up. It's third and five at the 32. Trying to uh, determine what this next play will be. A lot you can do on third down and five, especially if you have a back like Houdon. He is lined up just over the right shoulder of Tyleek Bethea. Ball just about in the middle of the field. Bethea. Wants to throw, swing pass out to Houdon. He catches it, and he will have a first down as he gets out. No, they're gonna, it looks like they might mark him short. Well, the official, the linesman on the near side here 
is marking about a yard short of where the official on the other side of the field marked it, and he says move the sticks, first down Delaware State. Yeah, he got that with that last individual effort guy when he just hurled his body in the air to pick up some extra inches, and those extra inches is what allowed him to get that first down. They will continue this drive here after picking up that first down. Bethea hands it off to Houdon, who's hit at the line of scrimmage, tries to push forward for yardage. Whistle blows, and he gets pushed back on the tackle. Uh, Onotario Johnson and Marcus Hendricks. One of the few plays that we've seen Houdon get knocked backwards, but again, uh, Johnson doing a really good job out of that linebacker position of, of catching him early in the hole, wrapping him up, having a lower center of gravity, and just driving him backwards. No gain on that play, second down and 10. New running back in the game, David Bowman's in. Haven't seen him all year. And the pass to the left side complete. Jordan Hanna picks it up just before it hit the ground. I was afraid the officials were going to say his knee hit the ground when he caught the ball. But he managed to go forward for positive yardage for Delaware State on that play. Not a lot on the play, but it still gained yardage. And they'll get it up to the 30. Where did they put it down? Uh, it's got about the 42. Yeah, 42. Not a bad game. Yeah, five yards, third down and five. Again, guy, one of those passes where Tyleek Bethea has got to really tighten that up. The quicker you get that ball and the cleaner that pass is out in those flanks, it allows those guys to make better moves out in space. Here's Bethea rolling right side, a little bit of pressure, throws complete. And where the ball was caught would indicate first down. The receiver actually was thrown backward by the tackler. The officials marked the forward progress where the catch was made by Trey Gross. First down, Delaware State. Miles Beverly, the tight end, with another reception. And again, they'll go over it with, with, with him in film, Gary. But when you are in those third down situations, you've got to know the situation. You can't be stepping backwards. You have to catch the ball and move forward to pick up that first down. At the 47-yard line for the Hornets, Bethea waits for the snap. Takes it, gives it to Hudon, into the middle, smashing through for a yard to the 48-yard line. And this defensive unit now starting to hit hard and looking for Thomas Bertrand Hooden coming through the line. Marquise Hendricks uh, just not blocked on that play. The linebacker uh, found him out in that, that hole, got, that, got to the hole before he did. And, again, that's the way you stop a guy like Hudon. you got to get to that hole before he does. And they're crowding the line of scrimmage. They're anticipating, especially on first down, a run by Dell State. Second down and nine from the 48 for the Hornets, from their own 48. Bethea from the gun. Again, gives it to Hooden. Big hole this time and gets up into Bethune-Cookman territory to their 46-yard line. It's going to be third down and about three yards to go. For Delaware State, Savion Hopes, the offensive lineman, the left tackle, his helmet came off on the play, so he has to come to the sideline for one play. So the Hornets have to put in a different left tackle. It'll be James King comes into the game in place of Hopes for at least this one play. They hand it off again to Houdon on third down. He pushes forward, but it, they're going to be short by about a yard as he gets to the 44. Had to get to the 43 of Bethune-Cookman. Here's the decision. Do you go for it here at this point in the field this early in the half? Offense wants to go for it. Of course, offense always wants to go for it. You know, if you're Coach Milstead, this is where you create those bonds, the bonds of belief. And if you have five, six, seven guys on the offense telling you to go for it, you know what? You've got to put the game in their hands. And especially if it's the linemen who are saying, let's go for it. They feel they can push these guys back. Fourth and a yard. Bethea on the long snap count trying to draw the defense into a jump. Doesn't do so. Two seconds on the, the play clock. And the Hornets will have to call a timeout before they get the call for delay of game. Very likely now we'll see the punting Delaware unit go State, out. Their first yard timeout. 
media timeout. We have a timeout on the field, and we'll take this timeout as well with 7.28 left in the third quarter. It's Delaware State 16, Bethune-Cookman 6. You're right. The other takes forever. One has built-in virus protection. The other should be quarantined. Transition. Hornets come back to action here. They're going to punt the ball. On fourth and one, Gary Lang, Mike Walker at Alumni Stadium in Dover, Delaware. And it is Jose Romo Martinez who finally kicks the ball away after the rugby style. And it looked like he had the option to run with the ball if nobody came up there. Remember earlier in the season, he ran one and got a first down on the play. This time he kicks it. It's a short kick, but effective. It's going to be Bethune-Cookman ball at their own 17-yard line. It's a good strategy, Gary, because it forces the defense uh, to literally respect uh, the, the punter running the ball so they can't get back and set up any types of walls or block for the returner, and simultaneously it freezes the returner. He's got to stand there and wait for the ball to be punt. It's a good strategy by Dell State. We'll call the line of scrimmage the 18, and it's Bethune-Cookman trying to sweep left side. The give is to Isaac Washington. Penalty marker goes down. This one could come back as Washington Isaac gets out close to the 30-yard line. Penalty flag on the play. Washington popped and up. And a little bit of a scrum going on over there. Hornets players involved and Bethune-Cookman players. A couple of them came from the sideline. That can get you tossed coming off the sideline. If you're Dell State, you got to focus on the, the scoreboard right now. You have the lead. You can't afford to lose any players or, for that matter, any field position based on extracurricular activity. Keep your head in the game. When players come off the sideline, though, to get involved, no flag for that, but the, the penalty. Play. Holding. Offense, number 13, 10-yard penalty, still first down. Penalty was during the play. We saw it, and it's a 10-yard penalty against Bethune-Cookman, setting them back 10 yards from where it occurred. So they will set it down, step it off from the 17 back to the 7-yard line. Half the distance. Half the distance to the goal line. Now I'm looking down with all the soccer lines and everything, trying to figure out the exact line of scrimmage, and it is the 9 So it's first down and 19 for the Wildcats. They'll fake the handoff and keep it around the left side. It's Williams, and Williams takes it right down the sideline and gets all that yardage they needed as he is finally taken out of bounds at around the 30. And that's where they'll put it down at the 30-yard line. Good run by Williams. Yeah, Del State uh, not doing a good job, Gary, protecting that. Uh, left flank, which is where uh, Williams attacked. you got to force that quarterback back into the line of scrimmage. You can't allow him to bounce outside. There's no protection once he gets outside. Akebius Williams takes the handoff, rolls left side, pass complete to Jimmy Robinson, and he'll dance down the left sideline, go out of bounds after picking up a first down as well, out to the 43-yard line. First down, Wildcats. This is how they kind of ended the first half with these little short plays that pick up yardage, go out of bounds, stop the clock, but they're getting the first downs on these short plays. Now Williams hands it off. Yeah, the give is to Keyshawn Bird. Bird gets a few yards across the 45 to the 46-yard line. In the first half, Keyshawn Bird ran twice, picked up two net yards. Corey St. James and a couple of the other Hornets involved in that, that tackle. Uh, again, that defensive line, Delaware State right now running a three-man front supported by what appears to be uh, four linebackers. So they're running a 3-4-4 right now, and that's really more of a pass defense than it is a run-stop defense. Second down and seven for the Wildcats. Snap bounced on the shotgun. Quarterback picked it up, threw downfield. Completed, but way out of bounds. Daryl Powell took it about two steps out of bounds. So it brings up third down and seven. We have a final in the MEAC, and Morgan State has upset North Carolina A&T 22-16 to this afternoon. 
That's a huge victory for Morgan State. You know, they knocked off what was considered to be, you know, the best team in the conference. That's a great uh, win over there for Ty Wheaton. Now on third down, plenty of time. Back to throw, looking downfield. Finally lets it go, and it is complete right in the middle of the field at the Delaware State 40-yard line, and they got it to Darrell Powell. Powell gets up to the Hornets' 38-yard line. Boy, did they give him plenty of time to get a receiver open. It's only a three-man rush gallery against five offensive linemen, so you're going to get that type of time when you're in the pocket. But, you know, you're hoping that those defensive backs and those linebackers can, can literally zone and man cover everybody out there. Williams, fake handoff, play action, throw, complete, short on the left side, first down, and almost lost the first down. As Jonathan Thomas came back after the catch, he caught it two yards past the first down marker and then ran back, almost lost that yardage, but he did keep it up to the Hornets' 26-yard line first down. DeAndre Boo Eli in on the coverage again, giving them a lot of respect, a lot of cushion, but when you do that, you have to be able to break on that pass. When you give that much cushion, you're really supposed to be playing not only the wide receiver, but the quarterback as well. Because when that ball is up in the air, you got to be able to make a break on that ball. Kevious Williams takes this snap out of the shotgun, hands it off. They run left side, getting away from one tackle. And juking past the second tackler is Keyshawn Bird. He'll take it up to the Delaware State 20-yard line for a pickup of six. And they're just kind of eating away here at this Hornets defense on this drive. A lot of plays, a lot of time taken up. Again, the fake handoff on the play action. Incomplete short pass on a crossing pattern to Kyle Smith. He couldn't grab it. And check that, uh, not Kyle Smith, Daryl Powell Jr. Dropped that one. Should have been a caught ball. Anquan Kinsey, Dell State, in on the coverage of linebacker, kind of trailing him on that play. The ball was behind him, so it wasn't really a good pass by Williams. Uh, but again, it's a good situation for Delaware State. They got their rush defense in right now. They're going to try to put some pressure on Williams. Third down and four. Williams pulls the ball down and runs with it, and he will have the first down at the 15-yard line. Had to get to the 16. That was a design play, too. He put it up like he was going to throw and then just pulled it down and ran straight forward. Clock still ticking away. A lot of time being used on this drive. At the Delaware State 15-yard line, Williams, nowhere to run, nowhere to hide, and they're going to get him after a pickup of about two yards as he get back to the past the line of scrimmage to the 13. Yeah, he got slammed hard on that play. I saw his helmet bounce off the turf. Those are those type of hits that, you know, quarterbacks tend to remember. He's going to try to shake it off, but he's actually getting himself together. I think he might have even knocked his uh, chin strap loose a little bit. I'll tell you what, if you hit your head off the turf too many times, you may not remember the play. Kevious Williams now looking to the sideline to get the play. Two receivers split out wide on the right, one on the left side, one back in the backfield with Williams. Williams. Pressure there. He got sacked back at the 20-yard line. And blowing right through the middle on that play for Delaware State, Kamari Jackson. Rush the defensive back. They got him in that strong safety position, Gary. He roams around the field, and he just found a little seam. He applied some pressure, got through that initial line of blockers, and made a huge tackle. Uh, on Williams on that play. All right, so the line of scrimmage has been set at the 19-yard line. It's third down and 14 as a result of that sack. Some of the best defensive effort we've seen this year from Delaware State. Here's Williams on third down, throwing end zone, tipped away. Good coverage for the Hornets. Andrew Reese, the defensive back, on coverage, tipped the ball away from the receiver at the last moment. Fourth down. And head coach Terry Sims will not send his field goal unit onto the field. Probably has no confidence in his kicking game, but, you know, let's see. 
Xavier missed a uh, McDonald, missed a field goal, missed an extra point. So they're going to have to decide what timeout. to do here with a minute and 31 left in the third yeah, quarter. Timeout. A timeout yeah. on the field. Timeout. We'll take this timeout as well. You're watching the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN3. And you are listening to HSRN, the voice of HBCU Sports. So what's the decision going to be here for Bethune-Cookman as we come back here? The offensive unit comes down on the field at 4th and 13 at the Delaware State 19-yard line. Kevius Williams takes the snap, steps back, pressure there. Penalty marker, we have holding on Bethune-Cookman. Catch is made at the 6-yard line, but it will come back. Short, short. Look like it might have been short on that play, guy. I, yeah, they might decline he, that. Yeah, well, yeah, you might want to decline the penalty because, well, let's see what they're going to do. And, and first, let's make sure it was holding called on the offense. There's no Eric foul Green. for holding on the play. Oh, come. No foul for holding. Clearly, Moses Dupree got picked, but that ball should be short of that first down. They got to the five. I think they needed to get inside the five. The fans showing their apparent displeasure. Ball placement, that, I don't get where And we have the officials whistling and huddling up here. The ruling on Are the they? field was a pleaded pass, pleaded catch. The previous play is under further review. All right, so I think what they're going to have to review here, I don't think they can review the penalty. But they are going to have to review the placement of the ball here and whether or not it gives Bethune-Cookman a first down. Yeah, you can see Moses Dupree clearly was pulled from behind. Yeah. And he's applying pressure. He's forcing the quarterback out of the pocket. Media, you can't obstruct his up. ability Media. Time up. to get a good shot at that QB. And everybody was cheering. They, they, they thought it was going to be the holding penalty. But instead... It's under review to see where the ball will be placed. <laughs> Delaware State University, let's get the call here from Eric Green. After further review. And his microphone apparently not working. Drowned out by the background music. After further review, there we go. The rule on the, on the field was a completed catch. However, we will have a measurement from the spot. There you go. The review didn't show where the ball should be if, if they have a first down. They put the ball down. Most of the ball is on the Bethune-Cookman side of the five-yard line, and I think they had to get past that mark for the first down. But we'll know in a moment here as they bring the sticks out and they stretch things out and measure for first down here. Stretch it out to its full length. And it is short, just by inches. The Delaware State defense able to see the measurement, and they're celebrating. Bethune-Cookman saying they have it. It's that close. Both teams think they have it. It's short, and it is Hornet ball at the five-yard line as they held on fourth down. Coach Mills did not only get his players of uh, minds back into the game, but his coaches as well. Yeah, the coach way out there on the field. One of the assistant coaches out at the hash marks. And Coach Milstead out there saying, get off that field. Act like you've been here. And he's like, Coach, I haven't been here that often. <laughs> he also didn't want to get him uh, a penalty just for that. First and ten, Delaware State at their own five-yard line. And the snap... Bethea fumbled the snap, fell on the ball, looked like about at the one or two yard line. We have a minute and eight left in the third quarter. Delaware State with a tenuous hold on a 10 point lead, 16 to 6. 
But now they have a second down and 14 and second at the one-yard line. The one. That offensive line is going to need to open up a big hole here for Thomas Bertrand Hooden. They give the ball to him. He gets hit at the line of scrimmage, spins his way up close to the three. It'll be third down and 12. On the carry. Third down for Delaware State. That bad snap really looming large right now for Delaware State. And on third down and 13, they huddle up. And we're about to go to the fourth quarter here. And uh, they won't have to get another playoff here in the third period. They'll let things go. And it'll take us to the fourth quarter here in Dover, Delaware at Alumni Stadium. Delaware St Fourth quarter underway here. Gary Lang, Mike Walker at Alumni Stadium in Dover. And the snap now to Tyleek Bethea. Bethea throwing. It, it will be complete. Nice catch made by Bazette Woodley. The guy who just, he never, never even left his feet. He just reached up over top of the defender, pulled the ball in. First down, Delaware State at the 22-yard line. Those two are really going to be a unique combination going That's forward. That's going to be special. That's a, another one of those back shoulder passes, Gary, that are to the sideline. One of those situations where the only person who should have a play on the ball uh, is the wide receiver. And again, great ball placement by Tyleek Bethea. Just the second catch of the game by Woodley, but both important. First one was a 22-yard one-handed touchdown grab, and that one to give the Hornets a first down. Now Bethea with a long snap count, and we're going to have a delay of game. Couldn't get it off in time. This will cost Delaware State five, put the ball back at the 17-yard line and make it first and 15. Number 12. That's the kind of mistake you don't need here. Yeah, and you know, I don't know if that's a player mistake or just getting the, the play in, but, you know, the play's got to be in. Got to get it in as quick as possible. They come out of the huddle. Now they've dug themselves a little bit of a hole again with first and 15. Bethea gives. They try to the left side of that uh, offensive line and get out to the 18-yard line. Thomas Bertrand Hooden on the carry. He's the only back who's carried the ball today for Delaware State. They have other backs standing on the sideline ready to play, but Hooden... Over 100 yards here again today, two games in a row. Two consecutive 100-yard rushes. We need to look to see the last time that happened at Delaware State. It's been a while, hasn't it? Yeah. They'll spread it out here now. They pick up uh, two yards on the play to make it second down and 13. Bethea takes a low snap down around the knees, picks it up, and he is intercepted. This is going to go for six. Stepping in front was Tidarius Peters, the safety, Stepped in front and took it to the house. That's a great play uh, by Bethune Cookman. If you're Tyleek Bethea, you got to have a real short memory. You know, you got to come back out because you're going back out offense right. uh, after this uh, kickoff return. So you got to have a real short memory. So with 13.09 left in the game, Bethune Cookman pulls within four. They missed an extra point earlier. They missed a field goal earlier. Let's see if Xavier McDonald can pull his team within field goal range of tying the game. Down by four. If he can make this extra point, they can tie it with a field goal. This one is up, and it is good. So it is now a three-point difference with 13.09 remaining in the game. And a timeout. It's Delaware State Media. 16. Timeout. Bethune Cookman timeout. 13. Timeout here. You're watching the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN3 and listening to HSR.
Bethune Cookman set off to kick off to Delaware State. <coughs> Difference here in the second half could be time of possession, too. In the first half, Delaware State had it for 18.54. Bethune-Cookman for 11.06. I think time of possession might be heavily toward Bethune-Cookman here in this second half as they put together a couple of long drives. First one didn't get anything. That one was a short throw. Well, they, the, the interception Medi. got the kickoff to the six-yard line. Brought up the middle and out to the 22-yard line for the Hornets. On the return, Kevin Meddy on that kickoff return. Coming into today, he had three punt returns on the season for 15 yards. Just got a pretty nice return there of about 15 yards on that kickoff. Now the Hornets have to take it downfield, try to put this thing away, use up some of that clock. Over 13 minutes left in the game. Got to be aggressive, Gary. You can't play to, um, you know, just hope that the time runs out. They have to literally be aggressive and try to get into the end zone. Here's Tyleek Bethea handing it off to Bertrand Hooden. That's it. And he got out to the 25-yard line, was grabbed and spun around and tossed down. Three-yard gain, second and seven. And so, again, they ran it on first down. And, again, you know, I, I guess they feel very comfortable just running the ball on first down. And, you know, it's a, it's a similar script to the offensive approach at Delaware State. On second down, Bethea gives it to Houdon, who hits the middle again and gets to the 27-yard line. Hornets will face a third down and five. Third down for Delaware State. And as we said earlier, there's a lot you can do on third and five. You can pass the ball. You can run the ball. So the defense has to play fairly honestly. Looks like they brought out Houdon and brought uh, David Bowman in. You know, this is a gentleman who rushed for 2,000 yards uh, at Milford High School. So he's a threat if he can catch the ball out in space. Yeah, he can do some bad things to that defense. Bowman gets the call. Bowman takes it upfield. Across the 35-yard line to the 37, and the Hornets have a first down. First, is that the first or second carry of the season for Bowman? He was in earlier, but I don't think he carried the ball. No, he didn't. That's a huge carry, too, Gary, because they needed that first down. They could not have afforded to punt that ball back to Bethune-Cookman when all the momentum is on their side right now. So, again, they have to strategically move down the field continuously looking to just pick up first downs and get themselves deep into the red zone. Bowman played in the season opener against Delaware, but he's been on the sideline the rest of the way here. Now they'll run it through the middle again, and this time it is David Bowman on the carry to the 43-yard line to make it second and four. Gary, he's small, but he's incredibly strong. If you ever see him without his uh, equipment on, I mean, this kid has the shoulders of a guy who's 6'6". He's a really... A uh, muscular, compact guy, but he's real short. Runs very low to the ground, and he's very fast. He can get lost behind those big offensive linemen. So, again, I'm looking for them to kind of use him uh, in that regard, in that capacity. But also, you know, Tyleek Bethea has to look to also run this ball as well. David Bowman at high school in nearby Melford. The team record in yards from scrimmage, 6,068. Hornets try the right side, and there's nothing there for them this time. Bowman on the carry. At Milford, he had 5,600 rushing yards. Played in 10 games last year for Delaware State. Had an interception return of three yards against Virginia Lynchburg in that season finale. Yeah, when they brought him in, they brought him in to play defense. Yeah. Uh, but they figured out that, you know what, his his real, his real better assets really would probably be uh, uh, utilized on the offensive side of the ball. Well, he had eight tackles against Howard earlier this season. And now on third down, Hornets running the ball. Three consecutive runs. Yep, and into the middle, and they did not even come close to the first down as they were stopped at the 42-yard line. Fourth and five. And they'll have to punt. Jose Romo Martinez 
Now, we watched him on the punts this week with that uh, rugby style running to the side and the option a few times on whether or not he would actually run the ball is causing problems for this special teams unit of Bethune-Cookman as they have to cover him as well. They can't just traditionally rush and peel off. This time he straight out punts it away, and Bethune-Cookman makes the fair catch at the 27-yard line. Tyrese Spain on the fair catch. The Wildcats have come out with nice field position here at their 27. Media timeout. And we have Media. a timeout. timeout. You're watching the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN3, listening to HSRN, the voice of HBCU Sports. Result of an interception. Bethune-Cookman at their 27-yard line. That's where they'll start this series first and 10. Down by three. The snap and the handoff on first down, running outside of left tackle and then cutting back toward the middle is Isaac Washington. Washington up to the 33-yard line. Gain of six, second down. No huddle offense coming back quickly to the line of scrimmage. Sending out receivers split two each on the right and left side of the line. Give it to fake the handoff to Washington. Quarterback Williams rolling, has to run with the football, and he'll step out of bounds after getting a first down downfield. Stepping out of bounds at the 46-yard line, and they'll move the sticks on downfield for Bethune-Cookman. Williams doing a good job of keeping his team in the game by running the ball. Yeah, they, He's they, not trying to win the game by passing. When He takes what the defense gives him. Hornets come up with a few sacks, but Williams has been really working with the feet. Ball on the far side hash mark at the 46. Williams hands it off, gives it to Washington. Washington goes up to the 48-yard line. That's only a two-yard gain for Bethune-Cookman, and it makes it second and eight. Good open field tackle by Anquan uh, Kinsey, the linebacker, just kind of sealing that in, making that initial contact and bringing him down. Hornets holding on to just a three-point lead, and really this defense needs to make a stop here if they're going to hold on to that lead. Here's Williams handing off on second down. Again, Washington crashing it. Gets it up to the 49-yard line of Delaware State. Another two-yard gain. It'll be third down and six. Third down, third down. See what they're able to come up with as Williams looks to the sideline to get the play. Finally does. He'll have Isaac Washington in the backfield with him. Royce standing just about parallel to the quarterback in the shotgun. Williams rolling left, throwing incomplete. Way too low, down around the feet of Marcus Riley. Never had a chance to try to catch it. Fourth down and five. And that will give the ball back to Delaware State. You talked about how huge uh, that possession would be for the defense for Delaware State University. And they met the challenge. They stopped a very powerful offense from continuing to drive down the field. Uh, if this punt is fielded cleanly by Charles Peeler with any type of a return, Delaware State should have fairly decent field position. That same uh, level of energy is going to have to be felt by the offense. Peeler down around his 16-yard line. <clears throat> Called the fair catch and made it out at the 18-yard line. So they didn't get the kind of return they were hoping for. In fact, they've had no punt returns today whatsoever. Now we have 6.35 Time left out. in the football Media. game. Delaware Time State out. still leading 16-13. You're watching the MEAC Digital Network on ESPN3 and listening to HSRN, the voice of HBCU Sports. I like that, man. That's good. Some time. Hornets starting off from their 18-yard line here. First and 10, Gary Lang, Mike Walker, fourth quarter from Delaware State. They'll give it to Bertrand Houdon, who will crash ahead to the 21-yard line. Right now, it just looks like ball control offense. 
But if you're not getting first downs, that's not good enough. So they need to mix up just a little bit. This defense is watching for Mr. Hudon. Yeah, especially on first down. I think they kind of figured out that Delaware State really likes to run that ball on first down. Um, they're going to milk the clock, obviously. You're not going to see them you know, in their rapid-fire offense. It's going to let that clock tick, 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 tick. But you know what? you got to get a first down, at least two of them, on this drive. Second down and eight. They'll run it up the middle again and be pushed back after a gain of maybe two yards up to the 23-yard line. Hudon again with third down and six for the Hornets. And uh, it's been a lot of hey diddle diddle Hudon up the middle. You know, obviously this is going to be a third down passing situation game, a situation. Uh, you know, Delaware State has kind of struggled picking up these type of uh, uh, first downs. But I, I, they're going to probably look for their playmaker, Bissette Woodley, or, or Jordan Hanna, on a shallow cross. Uh, two receivers split out wide on the right, one on the left. They keep it on the ground, and they're going to only get about a yard on the play. It will bring up fourth down and five for the Hornets. Hudon again got the call, got up to the 25-yard line. Fourth and four. Three and out at a time when they didn't need to go three and out. Yeah, that's their second three and out. That's their sixth consecutive run uh, up the middle. And, uh, you know, again, I know they're relying heavily on their defense, but this is a very powerful offense uh, in Bethune-Cookman, and you can't give them so many opportunities and think you're going to prevent them from putting points on the board. 424 left to play. Martinez to punt. Got away a low end-over-end line drive that'll hit the field, and the Hornets will let it roll and roll to the 39-yard line of Bethune-Cookman. That one almost got blocked. He started that rugby-style kick, and somebody was coming from that side. That could have been a disaster for the Hornets. Well, they ducked that bullet, and again, now they're going to give Bethune-Cookman pretty decent field position, Gary, uh, to start this, this drive. And the last two and the two drives uh, of note here in the second half for Bethune Cookman have been sustained drives, first down after first down. Wildcats trailing by three. The kicking game suspect. They missed a field goal in the first quarter. They missed an extra point in the second quarter. They did manage to get an extra point here in the fourth quarter. Pitch out. Marcus Riley on the end of the round, and he'll get up across the 40 to the 43-yard line. Riley picking up four yards on the play. And that's just one of those where the wide receiver comes around, steps in front of, runs in front of the quarterback. He just tosses it up in the air, and the wide receiver grabs it out of the air and continues to run. Second and six. Williams fakes the handoff, looking for somewhere to run. Started to the left. Went to the right, and he has a big first down into Delaware State territory to the 38-yard line. Yeah, his mobility as a quarterback is going to be Delaware State's Achilles heel. I think we got something. Is that a penalty flag on the far the side? indication is that we have a marker on the field. Delaware State defense pushing and pointing the other direction as if we have a marker. And indeed, I would think so because Bethune-Cookman is coming back. Take away that first down. During the play, personal foul, face mask, off it. It's number 76, 15-yard penalty, pre-second down. And that'll be 15 yards from the Delaware State 49-yard line. That will put it back to the Bethune-Cookman 36-yard line where they will have um, the down will be second down and 13. The penalty was huge on that play, but more importantly, the clock ticking is equally as huge. Under three and a half minutes to go here at Alumni Stadium. Delaware State trying to pull the upset here. Morgan State pulled one earlier against North Carolina A&T. Akebius Williams, plenty of time, throwing complete and hit immediately after making the catch is Marcus Riley. Charles Peeler on the tackle, also on the coverage as well. 
Third down and a yard to go. Ball on the near side hash mark for Bethune-Cookman. Williams with a lone back in the backfield. Hands off. Hit behind the line of scrimmage, and I don't think he got there. Mike Walker, do you, you, do, you also agree? You don't think he got there either? He looks a little bit short, Gary. He had to get uh, north of the 50, and he didn't make it. The Darian Wilson on the carry. This time they fake to Wilson. Quarterback hit in the backfield, throws it downfield. It is incomplete. Floated it up there. The receiver tried to jump up and make the catch. The coverage down there to break it up by Jawane Granger. Hornets will get it in Bethune-Cookman territory with 2.25 left in the game. You got to question that play call by Bethune-Cookman. It's fourth and inches, and they try that rapid-fire offense. Didn't really get their players set. Uh, Williams felt a lot of pressure from Delaware State. Looked like he was about to be sacked. Just hoist the ball up in the air, and he's lucky he didn't get interception, but a great play by Granger. Actually, the fact that it wasn't intercepted may have worked in Delaware State's favor. They get the ball further upfield. First and ten, Hudon through the middle. Now he carries tacklers, and he gets up to the 42-yard line. Six-yard pickup. Bethune-Cookman with a couple of timeouts left. They're going to have to figure out how to strategically use those. There's no two-minute warning in college football. Otherwise, we'd be seeing a stoppage right here as we hit the two-minute mark. And it looks like the Wildcats are going to go ahead and use that timeout. Yeah, this was a do-or-die situation for them, so they should have used that timeout instantly. Because if they can't stop Dell State from picking up timeout. Uh, this first Still down, Cookman. those timeouts yeah, wouldn't second even charge, matter. They let about 15 seconds, seconds go off the Time clock and before they called that timeout. Hornets in good position here. If they can pick up this first down, uh, they can uh, kind of almost coast to the end of it. They have a second down and four at the Wildcats' 42-yard line. Three-point lead for Delaware State. The defense has been doing the job out there all day for the Hornets. Now it's up to the offense. Hornets offense accounted for one touchdown. The defense got him a touchdown. Or rather, uh, both, both touchdowns by the offense. But the defense tried to set up a third one for him on an intercepted pass. Couldn't get into the end zone. Hudon through the middle. First down, Delaware State. To the 37 of Bethune Cookman. Right now, with that clock ticking, it pretty much works against them, uh, Bethune Cookman. Excuse me. They may use that last time they out. Just did. But again, I think they strategically, and it doesn't matter at, at this point, guy, because once Dell State picked up that first down, it became a moot point. There's a minute and 40 left in the game. Timeout. Bethune Cookman. But then third and last charge timeout. Final one timeout. Minute. Please reset the game clock to one minute, 42 seconds. They're going to reset minute, the game 42. clock, put two seconds back on, so it'll be a minute and 42 left to play. As this Hornet def uh, group comes together on the sideline here around the coach, huddling up for final instructions for this offensive unit. But everybody wants to be part of this. That's what a Hornet's nest is supposed to look like, Gary. All your players together, all focused on the exact same uh, mission, objective. And I thought, you know, they made a lot of mistakes in today's game. But i tell you what, they did a lot of good things as well. And looks like they've done just enough, barring some strange, unforeseen uh, incident. I think they've done enough to pull off a major victory. The kind of fight they showed in the fourth quarter at North Carolina Central two weeks ago, they brought into all four quarters of this one. First down, Hudon into the middle, hit in the backfield, manages to spin his way up to the 35-yard line. And they're just going to let that clock tick and tick and tick. They will take it all the way down to one before they snap the ball. As the celebration, not quite official here in Dover. 
They have to protect that football, and you know whoever carries that ball into the line better hold on to it tightly. That defense is going to be trying to uh, snatch it away or rip it away. They go into the victory formation. And Bethea takes the knee. Third down. Down doesn't matter as we're down to 42 seconds left in the game. All they have to do is take the knee one more time. And this celebration and how these players are treating head coach just reminds me last year as he gets the Gatorade bath, reminds me last year of when they got that first win at homecoming. Bethea takes the knee again, and that will do it here in Dover. Another upset today in the MEAC. Morgan State knocking off North Carolina A&T, and Delaware State doing it this afternoon to Bethune-Cookman holding on for a 16-13 win. And Mike Walker, tonight, all these Hornets get sprinkles. <laughs> you got it, because winners get sprinkles, Gary. That's right. And that's a tremendous team effort. I mean, this is the type of situation where you come of age. It's one of those come of age type of a game. And uh, like, I, like I said a little bit earlier, there's a lot of things that didn't go right, a lot of mistakes that were made in tonight's game. But you know what? Collectively as a team, they did enough good things to get a huge victory, not only for the program, but for the team talking about the team the individuals that's more important than what it does for uh, the university and, and the fans the, the confidence of the team i think just shot up immensely all right we're going to close out the television portion of our our broadcast here today we'll continue along on radio so for mike walker i'm gary lang saying so long from dover delaware where the final score is delaware state 16 bethune cookman 13 all games airing on the espn net espn networks are streaming live and archived in the espn the end.